welcome back everyone to another video and this is sort of the finale of the initial development on this unknown generic made in china four wheel drive chassis um, review that i was doing and that actually turned into a proper project on its own so i've done some explanation on this project on open hours in one of the previous episode and it was a 96 boards carbon special and uh, my colleague money also did his uh, demo on ble mesh but um, since i have already done many videos on this particular project on my channel i wanted to do a finale kind of a thing here so as you can see there are a lot more wires a lot more connections a lot more sensors since i've featured this particular project on this channel so we'll go through one of them one by one and starting from the bottom if i flip it over you can see there are four uh, infrared object detection sensors one is right here and there are four of them on each corner so what they do if the robot is at a let's say a tabletop for example or at a higher ground and if it's moving too close to the edge the sensors get activated or they send a signal saying you're too close to the edge and then the motors basically turn the other way around preventing the rover from falling down and the other major part are these six ultrasonic sensors and they actually work by sending um, just like a sonar they send out a ultrasonic sound one transducer sends it the other one receives it and the time delay is calculated and you can fairly accurately uh, judge the amount of distance the object is at so these are the ultrasonic sensors and um, there are six of them so even if the object is at a corner or at the center front or back or wherever uh, the rover can basically just move around it or escape it so there are two reasons i didn't use ir sensors for these front facing sensor and one is that ir sensors are pretty boolean in nature so they just give you one or zero instead of the actual distance and the second one is that ir sensors are not very suitable for outdoor use because they don't really work with with uv light so if there even is a, a shadow or the weather is very cloudy they still don't work that much of infra infrared from the sun is more than enough to knock them out so they are fairly they work fairly well if they are facing downwards you can put tiny black shields around them and they work even well but these ultrasonic sensors they work better under uh, tough con conditions of course these are also not perfect they are they do get affected at times with uh, the density of air so if it's too hot or too cold the reading isn't that accurate but you can always have an offset for it uh, when you program it uh, and then reset the offset every time you you are deploying it in a different area that's about the hardware well most of it at the very center we actually have the motor controller and this is extremely tiny it's about this big i featured this in one of my previous videos um, and it's uh, extremely suitable for these low power 5 volt motors talking about low power the controller itself is extremely low power it's a microcontroller cortex m4 uh, it's an stm32 and it's on the 96 boards carbon uh, which is a iot edition board and it's been manufactured and marketed by seed studio and let's see if it gets in focus i think there we go um yeah so 3.3 volts gpio uh, with pwm and uh, all the good stuff bluetooth and uh sc or stm32 you have uart and you have bootloader usb so yeah that's that's about it this is a pretty neat little microcontroller so this project is more or less uh at at least at this stage a replica of what i did with the uh, raspberry pi a few years ago and but that was actually a power hog uh, kind of a project because it was built on a very heavy metal chassis and to support its weight i used heavy 12 volt 
motors and then to run those heavy 12 volt motors you need a heavy um, motor controller and then we, I just had the Raspberry Pi at that time so the Raspberry Pi by itself is at least the Raspberry Pi 3 is a 10 watt uh, board and this thing is the consumes power in milliwatts so yeah that thing was powered by a huge lead acid 12 volt battery and I couldn't really find anything else to power that with uh, so when this lightweight chassis came around I knew I had to do it with a microcontroller because there's no way uh, that there's space for uh, 12 volt lead acid battery and actually the chassis itself would crack with the weight the motors won't work because that battery is just too heavy for them and to keep everything low power the sensors already are I have used a microcontroller now I'll just show you guys a video uh, this is the one that I presented in open hours so this is basically me just trying to create virtual obstacles with my hand and activate the sensors and it's actually it actually works pretty darn well so there are a few issues right now so let's get into how I ended up controlling the whole uh, all the area of the sensors and the motors and everything with a microcontroller and that is because of the help of Zephyr RTOS or Zephyr real-time operating system that is actually funded by the uh, Linux Foundation so it's an open source uh, real-time operating system and it employs uh, multi-threading essentially so I, I have individual threads for controlling all the ultrasonic sensors because they are actually very time sensitive and they also consume a lot of CPU time because all because the way you um, run them is you have to wait for the sound to bounce back and that can take times when we are talking about a fast microcontroller that is running on real time so that counts so there I have a separate thread running for the ultrasonic sensors a separate thread that takes care of the IR sensors and a separate thread that uh, takes care of the motor controller and the motor controller thread basically just communicates uh, basically just accesses data of all the other thread and get the sensor data irrespective of what the other threads are doing at the moment so that's how it works um, and it's pretty easy if you're going with the Raspberry Pi or something like the Dragon Board you can use pthread or posix thread that is available in in python and in c or c++ as you like and i'm guessing in many other programming languages with the arduino you do have to be a bit more creative uh, it is uh, possible but then you have to make your timings very tight and you have to manually program a whole lot uh, right into the microcontroller so RTOS is actually a perfect middle ground between something like an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. So now where this project can improve and I will be doing that pretty soon so there will be an update is first of all you can see that, that the top acrylic panel is actually missing and I actually have it right here and it has a strips uh, it has strips of uh, LEDs which I'm planning to control with the carbon and I'm waiting for some things to get solved um, and some more development in that field so we'll be taking a look at that as well but for now what I really want to do is to replace these thick wires with extremely thin ones that I've recently got because when you when you actually go ahead to place the carbon in a more sensible uh, position see say right here there is a lot of a lot of force applied by these rigid and hard cables that prevent me from doing it well or if I do it by force then I can end up breaking or bending the pins on the carbon mount so what I am going to replace them with is these thin single core wires that I've got and they are extremely flexible uh, and I can just run them over long distances and they'll be just fine so they are extremely thin but uh, they should work just as well uh, and I'll just show you where I've used them and how thin they actually are so this is a PCIe extender and what we actually intended to do with this was to test some uh, stuff on the PCI test some voltages on the PCI slot on the 96 volts popular 
and uh, I have used these extremely thin wires to actually just solder in between the PCIe pins and they are actually thinner than these contacts so it just worked uh, really well and they are actually very strong so I'm tugging on them and they don't really break so once that is done I think this will all be pretty well managed look a bit more neat and I can just do a lot more cable management a lot easier apart from that yes we'll have flashing LEDs and I will be incorporating Bluetooth control over it so that was it about uh, for this video I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for liking, commenting and sharing.